doing the same thing like last night, spring on the lyrics. So I was not prepared for so many faces. <laughs> but nonetheless, I am God's servant and I'm willing and available. And I want God to use me. So I ask the Lord will just touch me and that whatever I have to say, it will bless your heart. And we are going to pray tonight. So it's fasting and prayer. So I'm not going to speak too long before you. But one of the things we want to study this evening is still Bible study is um, fasting breaks cycles of failure and defeat in our lives. And that's what I want to talk about this evening. Um, before I do that, we have a birthday today. Two birthdays. So, oh, we have two birthdays. So, just to give me a nerve, my nerves. <laughs> I like us to just sing happy birthday to Sister Marva Walker and to Sister Denise Isa. And you can shake their hands, hug them up, kiss them, let them know you're happy they made it to another year. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Please greet them. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. A happy birthday to you. Ladies, asking for a short test. Sister Grace had a bright day too. Oh wow! A short, one-minute testimony. Yes. It's on. Alex, just turn up the blue mic a little bit, please. It's on Sister Marvel. Go ahead. Good morning. Happy Sister Marvel. I'll give God thanks and praise to see another birthday. I thank my pastor and pastoral staff for giving me this birthday. I thank you for that. Lord, I thank you. them to be in, in church. I just want to thank God for um, 2016 and um, looking forward to serving him um, in, in 2017 in spirit and in truth. Please pray for me because my aim is to serve him. Thank you. Good night, church. I will lift mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. All of my help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. Tonight, I just want to give God thanks and praise for taking me over to 2017. 
I just want to give God thanks for my family, my husband, my children, and for my church family. Um, first and foremost, uh, the Almighty God. He has been so good to me, so faithful, and it's my desire to continue to serve him. I just want to give a big shout out also to my pastor and church family. Many times um, when I go to work, I always have a word in my heart. And when my goings get tough, most times I can say, you know what? <laughs> God have it under control. So I just want to give God thanks and praise for everything. God bless. Happy birthday, all January born babies. This evening, I want to talk to us on the power of fasting that breaks cycles of failure and defeat. But we, before we can do that, I just want to recap what we did last week with Pastor. What is the importance of fasting? I don't know if anybody remembered from last week. And, and if you are in touch with us online, all of the notes are on our, on our website under the fasting and prayer page. But we'll recap quickly for you. Um, one of the things that Pastor talked about, I printed off my notes. Why should we fast? Fasting honors God. Fasting helps us to humble ourselves, therefore dethroning our selfishness and pride. Fasting helps us with repentance and personal failures. Fasting helps to dismantle yokes and loose the bonds, the bands of wickedness. Fasting also helps us to destroy strongholds of doubt and unbelief. Fasting increases our confidence and our effectiveness in our prayer life. And uh, fasting helps us to dis discover God's will. Those are some of the things we wanted to take away from last week. And so because we have that foundation, this week, I just wanted to give a little history on the Daniel fast. We do the Daniel fast here at church for a particular reason. And the Daniel fast is done based on Daniel 10, 2 to 3. At that time, then, I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. That's where 21 days come from. I ate no choice food. That's processed food. No meat or wine touched my lips. And I used no lotion at all. Oh, I didn't even know that. Until the three weeks were over. So my hands were dry and I've been using lotion. So I got to find that unscented lotion. But what Danielle was doing was fasting from all meat, all processed food, all things offered up to idols. And one of the reasons why he didn't want to eat the king's food or the king's delicacy because it was forbidden by the Mosaic law. You can find that in Leviticus 11. I'm not going to read all of those scriptures. They're up there. They're, he's going to put them up for you. Um, and also, he didn't want to eat it to defile his body. Another reason why also Daniel refused to eat the king's food was probably because it was offered up to false Babylonian idols, as was their practice. And and we believe, like Daniel, that we should not acknowledge or eat anything offered to idols or deities against God's commandment. So that's where the Daniel fast originates from. So we don't eat any processed food, any meat, anything that has additives. It's all natural. Uh, the purpose for Daniel fasting mainly is to cleanse our bodies. When you go back to what God created for us to eat, in the, in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, they didn't have uh, cheese. They didn't have pasteurized milk. They didn't have any of those things. They ate everything that came from the ground that God created. And so in eating, eating foods that were originally created by God helped to keep their bodies healthy. So another plus for fasting will give you a cleansing in your body. It also helps us to keep our focus on God and not on worldly things. And so we will zone in on going back to Eden, basically going back to the Bible days. And it gives us victory over our battles, and it helps us to also concentrate on the Word of God, set aside time where we will study God's Word, we will meditate. That's why we come to pray, that's why we come to reflect, 
and we share testimony that we will overcome the enemy. The Daniel fast is a great way to enter into preparation for growing in the Lord. And so we do it at the beginning of the year because this is the best time. It's the beginning. So you want to grow the entire 2017. It is a guide. It's not a command. We don't hold anybody to it. There are disclaimers. If you have a medical condition, you should consult your physician first. Lighthouse will not be responsible for anybody not following their doctor's orders. Just have to put that disclaimer out there. I double as staff as well, not just a member, and I know the inside, so I don't want anybody to get sick on our account. But fasting will help you. I remember when we were, my parents and I were doing uh, a diet program, and we had to do something like a Daniel fast. I don't have blood pressure, nor do I have um, sugar. And the pastor's pressure came down. He came off his medication. Sister Cameron, does it have, they said that she's precursor. She came off of the blood sugar regulating medication. So there are benefits in changing the diet and fasting and going God's way. And I'm trusting the Lord to continue doing this more regularly throughout the year so that I would also experience the benefits of a body cleanse and spiritual connectivity to God. So that's just a little bit on the history behind the Daniel fast and why we fast. And Daniel fasting also requires a powerful spiritual discipline. It is so hard when you're accustomed to eating meat, to stop eating meat. And when you like these nice flavored foods and the, the things that are added in the foods and make your, your palate taste really good. Yeah, but it, it's going to bless us in the end when we can discipline ourselves just for 21 days. It takes 21 days to form a habit. So if we get into the habit of doing this, then eventually it becomes a little easier for us the next time and the next time and the next time. It is very important to remember we just use it as a guide. Daniel fast is not a command, but as part of our Christian freedom, when do we observe a Daniel fast or we, or we decide not to? Fasting is the main thing that's very important. And you can read up on that in Acts 3.13-2. Acts 14, 23, uh, Luke 2, 37, Luke 5, 33. And now, therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart. Joel 2, 12. I think it's there. The next slide. Turn to me with all of your hearts, with fasting and weeping and with mourning. When I was reading up on Daniel when he was fasting, during that time, he really needed God to answer. He needed God to deliver the people of Israel. He really needed God to come through for him. And so he decided to put aside all. I know we work, we go to school, so we can't necessarily walk around morning with ash and sackcloth all over us. But in our hearts, when we're working, we can whisper a prayer. Our whole decorum, our whole deportment can be one of a little bit more piousness. In, in the good sense of the word. Because piousness can mean like you're being overly religious. But what I'm trying to say is, we can uh, emulate the same things that Daniel did by watching what we say, watching what we look at, watching what we listen to, watching where we go, and really take this time to consecrate, set aside ourselves to fast and pray. So to the meat of tonight's study, I call it study because I'm, I'm not a preacher. <laughs> uh, fasting breaks cycles of failure and defeat in our lives. 2 Corinthians 6.15 says, What agreement has Christ with Belial? Christ has redeemed us in Galatians 3 and 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law by being made a curse for us. As it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. So by him hanging on Calvary's tree, he became a curse for us that we would have freedom. The first one was 2 Corinthians 6 and 15, and the, sec and the second one is Galatians 3 and 13. I have a couple of questions I want to ask us. Uh, do you feel like you experienced failure, frustration, defeat in your life? Have you had that in 2016? I know I have. And even in 2017, actually, uh, Monday, I didn't get to come because my beautiful Suzu, my vehicle, I call her Suzu, decided 
that it would leave me stranded in the cold. I had a, a flat tire, and this is four brand new tires, by the way. And then um, all of a sudden, the vehicle wouldn't start. I went to Staples to pick up some ink for church to come over. Actually, we're going to meet somebody who wants to partner with us to help me push my business forward. And by the, by the middle of the whole scenario or circumstance, I realized the enemy was fighting me for moving forward. And um, 11 times I got a jump start. Oh, my goodness. Talk about frustrated. It was like 23 degrees outside. I didn't wear enough layers. So, you know, the heat wasn't really there. And thank the Lord, I'm still able to meet with the individual. We met in the car. It was most inconvenient, but thank God for favor. And then the vehicle was running. When they were about to drive off, everything went black. Like, my God, I am really honestly tired of this situation, this circumstance. And I remembered our team for this year. I will not allow circumstances to constrain me. And I said, this is really constraining because there's no heat. I can't drive off. And then, thank God for angels unaware. About eight people came to help me. <laughs> I not can feel embarrassed or I could just thank God. So I choose to thank God. <laughs> the first one, I went to put the air in the tire. And the gentleman said, you don't need to spend $1.50 just for one tire. He pumped my air and I didn't have to spend any money. And he did it, so I didn't have to take my hands off my coat, turn on anything, and pump it. That's one, one testimony right there. Then when I get in the parking lot and I was about to leave, um, three people came. So those are the four angels. This one girl, she said, do you need a jump start? I said, no, because, you know, the top of the, the battery actually is a little smooth, so the cap doesn't hold. I put a little foil, you know, when you're from the Caribbean, you know, you make shift with anything. So I put a piece of foil to make sure that the, the current would connect, you know, a little science background. And I thought the foil got eroded or whatever. So I opened, popped the hood like, you know, I know what I'm doing. And then the battery shifted. Everything was tight. The foil in top. I'm like, what is this? Go turn on. Click. Nothing. Uh, click. Nothing. So the girl said, you sure you don't want to jump? So I said, you know, maybe I might need one. So just hold on. Now she couldn't find her battery, she trunk full of all kinds of things. This other guy passed in, we asked him, sir, do you have a jumper cable? He said, um, I don't know. So he went to his car, he came back, guess what, I have one. The man opened his phone to jumpstart for dummies. And I'm like, Lord have mercy. He don't even know what he's doing. We're going to be out here a long time. Anyhow, long story short. This young guy came by and he saw all three of us there looking like dummies, and indeed. And he said, y'all need help? I said, yes, we need help. <laughs> so he came, he plugged it in, and my, my stuff don't say plus or minus. Okay, this is a 12-year-old vehicle, so she don't really give you all those details. Nonetheless, he knew what to do we plug in. It started about three times. On the fourth time, it stayed on. And I'm not, I like numerology, and I know some people have taken it extreme but i just thank god on that fifth time which is grace for me the lord's grace was sufficient because he knew i couldn't handle any more so the vehicle was running i was able to meet with a young lady and then when i was about to drive off there we go black right there imagine if i was in the middle of the road and the vehicle stopped, no light, the hazard light wouldn't come on, the park light wouldn't come on, the brake light. So there was no indication to oncoming traffic that something is wrong. So I said, Lord, instead of feeling embarrassed, I just thank you again. And I stayed there for about 30 minutes. Just I sat in the vehicle. <laughs> I probably looked like a dummy. I sat in the vehicle and I was like, Lord, you know what? Um, send somebody because right now I don't know what to do. And these people were leaving from Bob's furniture. And the guy said, did you need a jump start? I said, yes, I do need a jump start. Of course, duh. I need a jump start. So he helped me. And then he said, you know what you got to do? You got to put your foot on neutral. Keep it revving. Don't stop. I said, what? Oh, me? I can't do it. So I tried. All three times, the car cut out. I said, sir, um, if you don't mind, I don't live far from here. <laughs> If you can just do what you're telling me and just get me home, somebody get me to church. And then he and his wife were going somewhere far. So we managed to move it out to the middle of the road 
into another parking spot. I was more concerned about them towing me, paying a 175, then going to the tow yard, paying another one. I'm like, and the numbers just keep racking up, racking up. So he said, ma'am, if you just do what I'm telling you, keep it revving. When you get to the stop sign, put it in neutral. Press on the brakes and press on accelerator. I said, well, we can have an accident. I can't do that. And not that I didn't try. I tried. Yeah, look, we can do all things through Christ. Yes, but I tried. It didn't work. So finally, I just gave up. I said, Pastor, I called Pastor. I realized they were still here. I waited till everything was done. All this time, I sitting in the car with no heat. Because once you stop, does it be could stop? Eventually, Phoebe passed and mommy came. When they came, um, during that time, I sat there and I was thinking, Lord, you know, I really am tired of these struggles, these circumstances. I'm faithful. I'm serving you. I, I know people say things and things come down through your generation, but I am here fasting. I am praying. I'm believing. I'm trusting you that you will break these patterns of defeat and failure and coming to the point and not crossing over, you know? And I had a, a moment to really reflect, and I said, God, regardless of what, I'm going to thank you, I'm going to trust you. And that's the truth. By the time passing Sister Cameron and Phoebe came, I think I had had enough. I also wanted to use the bathroom. There was no bathroom inside. So a mountain of circumstances, and I remembered right away, I will not be constrained by my circumstances. Somehow we're going to get out of here. Long story short, pastor was driving and the vehicle cut out. So I didn't feel too bad. Now here's a man, a real driver. I mean, he's seriously driving more than me. And it cut out with him. But by the 11th time, Sister Cameron started saying, okay, now, in Jesus' name. All we kept saying, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And let me tell you all, this is, this is no joke. You know, my mom records. And, and I'm grateful for that, even now. She's. I, she said, y'all are recording. I said, mommy, right now my hand cold. I can't feel my face. I can't feel my lip. I can't feel nothing. Can you record? So she recorded. And the whole time, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, when we turned out to get onto East West, all we saw was the Suzuki make a shake up, like it was being delivered from something. <laughs> I'm telling you, it sounds funny, but when, when we look back, there is power in the name of Jesus. And I'm here to tell you, now, while some things don't just come out with prayer, add fasting to it, and the name of Jesus, you will see victory. So I am standing on God's word and his name that with this fast, cycles of failure and defeat are going to break, not just for me, my entire generation, my household, and this entire body of people here, and us a lighthouse, and in this community. Now, we would not just be a church here like any of the other churches around here, but now whenever people come through the door, their shackles fall off right as they enter the door. Even during the worship, they come in here, they walk out, they walk through that door, and they, they either they manifest, or they, they holler, or they shout, or they laugh, or they jump, or they cry because they're being delivered and God is setting them free. There is power in the name of Jesus. And all the way home, we got home. Saying in Jesus' name, that's all in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, probably sounding like a bunch of dummies, but in Jesus' name, we don't care how we look, in Jesus' name. And it reminded me when I was younger, my son, a school teacher, so a plug for Life Hour. Please come to Life Hour, you might learn something. She always told me, when you feel afraid, oh, you said the blood of Jesus. Don't even add other words. There's power in Jesus' name, there's power in his blood. The blood of Jesus, in Jesus' name. And I saw that Suzuki shake up. We got home. And then we said, Lord, green lights. No more stopping. Every light, I kid you not, was green in Jesus' name. We got home. Pastor turned off the vehicle. Turned it back on. It started like nothing ever happened. Yesterday morning, turned on like nothing ever happened. This morning, turned on like nothing ever happened. Let me tell you now, my new, when I go out here in the morning, my heart was so, you know, jumping, like, ooh, I don't want you to turn off today. And I had to speak to that doubt and fear, and I said, no, in Jesus' name, you're going to turn on. I already got the victory, and this cycle is broken. And it turned on. So I'm encouraging you that with this fasting, challenge the Lord to see proof of him in your life, to see proof of him with your family, with your children, whatever you need God to do, 
challenge him with this prayer and fasting that cycles of failure and defeat and limitation and circumstances and struggle and brokenness will be broken off of your life. Unfortunately, there are still many, many believers who live under curses. Even though they have been legally redeemed from the curse when they accepted Jesus Christ. Just as a believer may have to fight a good fight of faith for healing, he or she may also have to fight a good fight of faith against curses. And that's something that's resonating even more with me. I want to see in my generation, we don't just have one or two or three good marriages. And, and it's no secret. In my family, and it's not a boast, my parents um, and I have one cousin, yeah, Two, pe two people in my family that I know of have good marriages. And when I say good, good marriages, I mean, and I'm not bashing anybody. In God's order, they didn't get any children before they got married. They kept themselves till they got married. They got married. They stayed married and content. In the family, we have those who lived home. We have those who got you know, children and didn't get married and they got married afterwards and they get divorced. And I see those cycles happening. And I'm saying, God, if you could do it for them, if you could change Jabez's whole story, then you can change ours. Whatever was your past was your past, okay? That, that was the past. But moving forward, we can change the cycle because we want to inher inherit God's blessings. And I'm saying that I want you to break that cycle of, of marriagelessness also in our family. Break that cycle of coming to the edge and not going over. I see we might be pastors in the church, but there are, we humans and we have things that we inherit from the generations that are still prevailing today. And I'm really asking God with this fasting that he would break those patterns in our lives and in all of your lives. What, you know what struggles are in your family. And you want God to relieve you of that. Unsafe children, unsafe loved ones, family suddenly dying. All of those are cycles and curses that we need God to break. Let this fasting and prayer be one that God will break those cycles in your family. Sickness and cancer got a break in Lighthouse. We don't need anybody else getting any diagnosis in this year of any cancer in Jesus' name. Cancer is a curse, is a demon from hell. I know, I know, we might eat things, we might do things, whatever, etc. But the fact of the matter remains that cancer is a curse. That sickness is a curse. Regardless of how it comes on a person's life, it's a curse. Because its aim is to steal, to kill, and destroy. And who does that? The devil. So it is demonic. It is a curse. So we want those patterns of sickness, limitations, broken homes to be broken off of our lives in this year. So just as we work out our faith with fear and trembling and for healing, we have to do the same to break off curses. Many of those curses can affect a person's life, resulting in one of the most vile and wicked spirits of darkness, and that's the spirit of Belial. And the spirit of Belial is a spirit of wickedness that likes to operate and, uh, under command and, and cursing people's lives. Um, it, when I observe the practice and the sins that happen in this nation today, the spirit of Belial is happening a lot in America. And this is no bash against the country. When we look at, just look for yourself how things have been going, the direction that America has moved away from when it first started. Think of where we were then to where we are now. The spirit of Belial, of wickedness in high places, has really expanded itself. It's a strong man in this country as well as other nations in the world. And it's a world ruler of wickedness. Jesus taught us the necessity of binding the stronghold or the strong man in order to spoil his goods. And you can look at that in Matthew 12, 29. And I ask us to call it to help me read. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? 
So in order for us to really enjoy the fruit of this nation, we have to get rid of that strong man. And we are Lighthouse Ministries International. And in the word international, you can find the word nation. And so whatever strong man might try to take up lodging in Lighthouse Ministries International, we have to get rid of it. Because we don't want that when people walk through the door, there is a struggle. We really want to kick that rock out of here, that pastor doesn't have to have that rock there to encourage us to worship. Whatever is a prevailing circumstance in this community, in this city, we need to get rid of it. Please put the scripture back on. I understand that every community has strong man and strong holes. And so tonight, we want, that's, I'm telling you prayer points as we go. We want to break off the strong man in the city of Beltsville that is affecting churches. Yes, we want to see the seats filled. But for the seats to be filled, we have to be equipped. Because if people come to the door and they come here all messed up and come into this hospital and we're not equipped, we're going to have chaos and havoc in here. So the strong man is keeping us on the fear and intimidation. You're not wanting to do things because, oh, I don't do that. I don't know. I'm not sure. We're going to break off all of that this evening. Okay? The prayers that we're going to pray this evening and declarations are to break the spirit of Belial over our city over our home, over our ministry, over our business, over our families. We pray that Belial, the world ruler of wickedness, will be bound and all his demonic hold on your family and your community, our community, will be broken. So before we do that, we need tools. Our people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's what God says. So we don't want to be a people without knowledge. So there are about four things, four quick things, points I want to share with us about how fasting helps us to break cycles of faith and defeat. The first one is fasting causes you to become more fruitful. In our church, fruitfulness means on a Wednesday night, we have full seats. That's fruitfulness. Not, not that we're not being fruitful right now. Don't miss me. What I'm talking about is enjoying living in that abundant fruitfulness God promised us. So when we fast this year, this month, we want God to rain upon us fresh fruits. Joel 2 and 23. Sorry, Joel 2, 22. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pasture of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the, vi the vine do yield their strength. When we bear fruit, there is strength. We, we have, you know, there's a saying, there's strength in numbers. So when we have more fruits, more of us, more vines, we have more strength. To overcome the plans of the enemy. To overcome the circumstances that will try to constrain us. So we will not be afraid of the enemy who is the beast who will try his best to cut off our fruit or cut us off from the vine. Fasting helps our ministry to grow and become more fruitful. It helps our people to become more fruitful in every area of their lives. And this is how it's going to help us. It's going to increase our ministry, which is our church, increase our family, marriages and homes and children. It'll also increase and better our careers, our finances and our jobs. It will help our businesses. I pray that God will give all of us here business ideas and inventions. When you are blessed with ideas, you might change the whole world. Many of those famous people, it just took one idea. One idea can break a cycle of poverty in somebody's life. So I'm encouraging you, ask God to give you a witty idea, a creative invention that something you can do that they'll say, oh, you know, this thing is done by that Amy Beckley. And because of Amy Beckley, people in Sierra Leone have no more lack. Wouldn't that be something awesome? And where did Amy Beckley come from? Lighthouse Ministries International. So when she's blessed, when I am blessed, when our businesses are blessed, our church is fruitful because we tied here. We also experience an increase in fruitfulness in our spirituality. Answered prayers. I am tired of the enemy trying to kerfuffle my prayers when I send them up to God. So I'm asking God that he would sharpen my tongue with the word. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, I will say it is written, God will raise up a standard against you. So when I pray, the Lord is going to answer. When I speak a word, it will come to pass because God has given me the power over the works of darkness. 
and life and death are in the power of my tongue. Not just pastor's tongue, but my tongue. And if something happens, I don't have to run to Sister Dawn, Sister Daphne, or Pastor Sister Cameron, or the board members. Oh my gosh, pray for me. I can stand up and say over the circumstance, I will not be constrained by this circumstance because God is greater inside of me and you will not overcome me because I have overcome all things by the blood of the Lamb. And that only comes when we decide to pray, to fast, and study God's word. The second one is fast and release the rain, the rain of God. When you think about rain in the natural, rain brings life, it replenishes, it, it wets the dry land. Where there is a famine, when there's rain, the crops grow, everybody feels lovely. I don't know if you ever like the smell after the rain. Oh my gosh, it feels fresh. You can just go in the rain and bathe and play. So if all of that happens naturally, how much more powerful it will be if we have the reign of God in our lives. Joel 2 and 23. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. In the which month? The first month. And when are we fasting? The first month. Exactly. So in this fasting, we want to experience, leave the scripture on. In this fasting, we want to experience God's reign. And reign for us is very significant. I'm not just talking about the reign outside now. I'm talking about reign of houses, reign of cars, reign of jobs, reign of spouses. Reign of children, for those who believe in for children. Reign of health and healing. You know, reign of prosperity. Reign of protection. There's so many areas we want God to reign in. Reign represents an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And reign also, you can go to the slide. Reign also represents blessings and refreshing. Israel needed the former reign, as the scripture is talking about, to moisten the ground for planting. So for us to plant and get the fruits to come in and fill the seeds, we need God's rain so that when we go out to plant the seeds, they won't fall on poor soil, but they'll fall on good soil. Amen? They, the children of Israel needed the latter rain to bring the crops to maturity. So there are a couple of things. It's refreshing. It's blessing. We want our ground to be ready for planting, but we also want maturity to happen in our church. That if a brother or sister has a problem, it don't escalate to something out of out of hand. Now, because we're mature believers, that we will be able to deal with it in a mature way. Amen. God has promised to give the former and latter rain in response to our fasting. Fasting moistens our hearts, which is the ground that God works on, and it also prepares it for planting of God's word, which is the seed. And these are the things that we will experience when we fast to break cycles of defeat and failure. We'll experience a rainy season, net breaking season like Pastor talked about. The rain will cause us to be replenished. It will help us to have blessings and refreshing, and we'll have an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. If you have not experienced revival in your spirit for a long time, through this fasting, the Lord can cause a rain and revival to fall in your life. And refresh you. Point number three, and then the last one, and we're done. Fasting breaks limitations and brings enlargement. So we want God to, to cause us to be fruitful from this fast. We want him to rain on us. And then we want him to break limitations and to enlarge us. Release favor and cause us to be expanded. Esther 4, 14 to 16. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come into the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return, Mordecai this answer. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and pass ye for me and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king 
which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Wow. Hold on one right there. So Esther decided that she's going to step out boldly. If you want God to release you from lim limitations, we have a responsibility. The word of God in Hebrews tells us that faith without works is dead. So if we don't put any action to our faith, we can't expect that God will just, you know, because we say we believe in him, I'm going to just give it to them. That's why we have to work out our salvation fear and trembling. That's why we have to add works to our faith. So Esther decided she was going to fast. Some things really don't come out with just prayer, but through prayer and fasting. So she added fasting and decided in her heart, at the end of the fast, action. So when we finish with this fasting, it's a call for action for all of us. For these curses to remain broken, it's not a one-time prayer. It's not a one-time, okay, it's done. It's a continual thanking God and going before him as new things come into your spirit. Now, we will not go back to where we were. And the matter of fact is, Lord, I am deciding. If the enemy try, he tries. But I'm going forward in Jesus' name. As Esther said, if I perish, I perish. But I'm going to go before the king and she's going to challenge him. And go in boldness that God is on her side because she did her due dil diligence. She prayed, she fasted, she separated herself, consecrated herself unto the Lord. And so now God has no excuse to work he has no reason not to answer and this is what we want god to do remove the limitations and release favor and enlargement on our lives fasting was part of defeating the plans of haman all the hamans in our lives we will defeat them this month this year through this fasting and prayer haman tried to destroy the jews the whole nation of Israel was delivered, however, through fasting. If they had decided we can just pray a little prayer and go before the king, I'm not, I'm not in any way believing in prayer. But you know, sometimes you do this rush, rush thing and expect God, you know. But God, I pray, you're supposed to because you answered a fervent prayer. That wasn't really fervent. Come on now, be honest with yourself. Was it really fervent? No. So if we're going to seriously pray, then add a little fasting to it. We're denying ourselves. God loves when we come before him, you know, with a contrite heart, broken before him, like Daniel was saying, come mourning before him, weeping before him. We might not be able to do all of that, go put on, you know, rip our clothes and throw ash on our head. But in our hearts, we can purpose that, Lord, I'm going to come before you and I'm going to fast that you are going to answer my prayers. The whole nation of Israel, all of the Jews, now we're going to be destroyed by Haman. We're delivered by fasting. So don't underestimate the power of this fast. Esther needed favor from the king, and she received it as a result of her fasting. So when we have the prayer vigil, sometimes pastor asks us to do a three days fasting. So it's not like an arbitrary thing. He just decided, oh, let's do a three days. You have the scripture right there to show you. When Esther wanted to go before a very important person in government, she set aside time. She even called her handmaidens, come, we need to fast. This is an important, urgent matter, so we got to fast. The whole nation was delivered by fasting and prayer. Fasting releases favor and brings great deliverance. Enlargement also comes through fasting. Fasting breaks off limitation and gives us room to grow and expand. Deuteronomy 12 and 20. When the Lord thy God shall enlarge thy border, and as he, as he hath promised thee, and thou shalt say, I will eat flesh, because thy soul longeth to eat flesh, thou mayest eat flesh whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. So after, the, after we fast and the Lord enlarge you, it's time to feast. Because you're fasting because you want God to answer. And now when he answers, we're not going to be mourning and crying. And we, if God answers, it's time to celebrate and rejoice. So whatever your soul wanted for, oh, that chicken, I'm going to eat it because God answered. So we want to do what we're supposed to do first so that we can have the end result. Sometimes we put the cart before the horse and we expect the end result without the work. It doesn't happen so in the natural, neither in the spiritual. 
So I'm encouraging you that this fasting will break off limitations in your life, and it will also increase God's favor and enlargement in your life. And the last point is fasting will cause you to have great victory against overwhelming odds. For me, being in that call and just having car troubles is an overwhelming odd by itself. And I can identify with those people who have car issues. When your vehicle is not reliable, it's not working, Sister V, that's an overwhelming odd. To be stuck outside and not getting from point A to point B and everything here, almost everything here in Maryland you have to drive to, it's not like you can take public transportation, that's an overwhelming odd. But I'm thanking God that this fasting is going to bring all of us into a period of victory against overwhelming odds. You're on the job and this one co-worker just nagging you, nagging you all the time. Oh, that's an overwhelming odd. You got a boss that doesn't understand, that doesn't try to see with you, they try to undercut you, they try to rob you, an overwhelming odd. But with fasting, we can have victory against that. Second Chronicles 2 and 3. Sorry, Second Chronicles 20 and 3. And Jehoshaphat fared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. Jehoshaphat was facing combined armies of Moab, Amnon, and Edom. He was facing overwhelming odds. That's three armies he was up against. Fasting helped him to defeat these enemies. In the same way, fasting will help us to defeat the enemies that we see today. The enemies you see today, you will no longer see them after this fast. I'm declaring that in Jesus' name. Jehoshaphat called a fast because he was afraid. Fear is another stronghold that many of us as believers have difficulty overcoming. But we thank God that at the end of this fasting period, we will break that cycle of fear and intimidation and terror and fright and panic and apprehension and timidity, and we will overcome all of that through fasting and prayer. Freedom from fear is a requirement to live a victorious life. And I thank God that we will be able to live that victorious life. So just to recap quickly, the four things that fasting will do to break cycles and defeat in our lives. Number one, it will cause us to become more fruitful. Number two, it will release the reign of God. Number three, it will break limitations, release favor, and bring enlargement. And number four, it will cause us to have great victory against overwhelming odds. And those scriptures are there. If you want a copy of my notes, you can get them. Um, just send an email to AVM. But in conclusion, I want to leave these points with you. That we can break cycles of failure and defeat by fasting to win in the midst of pending defeat. To overcome fear. To break demonic terror, panic fright, apprehension, timidity, and to live in freedom. We have been given freedom by Jesus Christ. He's the one who sets us free, and we have no reason to be in bondage. We don't have a reason, but the enemy has reasons to keep us there because when we are free, we affect his kingdom. And so I'm thanking God that we are going to move forward. Christ has redeemed us, as in Galatians 3 and 13. Christ has redeemed you, he has redeemed me, he has redeemed us, heaven light us from the curse of the law. He became a curse for us, as it was written. Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. He became a curse so we can live in freedom. May this fasting and prayer season break cycles of failure and defeat in your life. I asked earlier Sister Dawn and Sister Collette to please pray with us this evening. I'm going to ask them to come up. And, and, and even if you want to stand, you want to come before the altar and, and pray. And It's only 9.30, and I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll get out of here shortly. But if you have a need on your heart, and you have a cycle that's been happening on your job or, or in your family or, or in your generation, and you need God to break that cycle, you need God's reign, you need the fruitfulness of God in your life, when you put your hand to do something, it breaks, it falls apart. It doesn't succeed. That's the cycle. 
When you think of things that happen over and over that are bad, circumstances that are overwhelming, it's a cycle. And tonight we want God to break them. So I asked the two young ladies if they would lead us out in prayer, one after the other, or together, however you want to do it. But I'm encouraging us, pastors here also, if you need someone to lay their hands on you and give you a little extra, pastors right here, to pray with you, that these cycles of failure and defeat will be broken in Jesus' name over families, over our businesses, over our careers, over our church, and over this community. Those are the areas. Yahweh, 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 I will not forget you all my days in every situation I'll never God. Brethren, limitations, I know we all have limitations, but tonight we are asking God to do a great and a mighty work. Let me just share one little thing. I don't know how I got the idea that you started fasting from Sunday. I'm the only one probably heard differently. But anyhow, the eighth was in my mind that, and so therefore I got up very early. And one of the things that Sister Juanita says, Hallelujah. how we ought to come and cleanse ourselves. Hallelujah. You always do that. And that's one of the things that I did very early in the morning. Because if we're coming before God, we have got to get all these things out, as she has said, so that when we come before God, the things that we need for him to do for us. And something happened. You know when you're fasting and all such like the devil is after you. Jesus. Jesus. Something um, happened. Hallelujah. It's not the first time. It's not the second time. It's like the third time. I always dream that somebody's trying to trap me. Like I'm under some place. And to get out. Hallelujah. And it hasn't happened for a long time. And it happened again that I found myself trapped in a room. And I was there with a child. Always looking after children. But anyhow, I was there with a child. But sometimes the enemy brings things and bring familiar faces too. And I found myself in this room. And I said, oh my God, I had this child. And then suddenly I'm in this room. And I got into this room and somebody closed the door so I can't get out. So I called. I said, I call like for my brother. I just find myself calling like if I persons were around looking like my brother and then my father. My father's dead. So I know that that just familiar face the enemy brought. And they did not. It's like one just they heard me but just not bothering. And the only thing I could have done, brethren. I started praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Immediately. Hallelujah. Immediately. And there are times when I, things happen like that and I, I, fear will come on. As our sister said, the best of us fear. The enemy brings fear. But I always fight the enemy and say, you know what? I always tell myself, fear or no fear, I just have to speak the word. Jesus. And I'm not going to let the enemy know what is going on within me. And so I, be, I went down into the spirit language and I began to pray. Honestly, by the time I started praying in the Holy Spirit, the door was open. Hallelujah. I don't know how the door Hallelujah. opened. Nobody did Hallelujah. open, but I came out. Hallelujah. It you. always happens. It's not the first time. Jesus. It's not the first time. Thank you, Jesus. I saw myself one time I was praying. And every time you fast, you're praying, things happen. And then the Lord show you things that... 
um, what the enemy planned for you. So therefore, fasting, I'm just saying this to let you know how good it is to fast and pray. And I was fasting and praying, and the Lord showed me I was right down in the ground in the earth, like in, I was in a coffin. I saw myself, I know it was me. And I'm there, I'm trying to get out. And then again, I begin to pray. I began to pray, I began to pray. And whatever the demons were around were saying, um, they're trying to keep me down. And then suddenly, it's like an angel, like the, the host came and said, no, it can't happen. And I'm just praying and I was released. Brethren, there's so many things going on that you don't even realize that whenever you are trying to live on as a child, a woman or a man of God, you are always being attacked. And I was done. I saw myself and just praying. and said, no, she doesn't belong to you. No, you can't have her. Just because I started to pray. And so we don't realize how important it is. And I don't take it lightly, even when I'm called to come up here to pray. When I come up here to pray, it's a different feeling altogether because this place was offered. And as Pastor said, that when we come here, it's for God to hear and answer prayers. I don't know how you feel. I don't know how persons feel. But it's a different feeling. The Holy Spirit is so present and it's so strong, brethren. That it affects me. It affects me in a way that I got to pray. I got to trust God. Something happens. And we don't want to just come here and nothing happens. Because as I said, the fast breaks cycles. And we have to defeat failure. It is too long. We are tired. We are tired with the limitations. We are tired with the spirit of almost dear. Brethren, how often you have been praying. And when it seems as if you are about to get it. And you believe it's okay. I have it here. I have it here. And then suddenly you don't have it. And you said, what happened? What happened? I have been praying. And there are things over our lives. The lives of our family. We got to be tired. We're fed up. And I was talking to God early this morning. The things that Sister Juanita was saying. The very things. And I begin to write down. And early before we start fasting. I said to Sister Daphne. And before. Since last year. Before the year break. I said you know what. I said we have got to believe. And reach the stage. Without doubt, without thinking. Amen. That when we speak something, it must come to pass. I said, don't doubt in your heart. Let us just believe God. I said, because if we don't believe God, we have nothing to gain. But if we believe God, we're going to receive something. Yes. Brethren, yes. believe. Yes. It doesn't matter how it looks, just believe. It doesn't, you don't concern yourself with how long it will take. Just believe. Hallelujah. Just let's have this faith to believe like a child. Hallelujah. Just like a child. Hallelujah. Just believe in the name Hallelujah. of Jesus. Oh, we must not be constrained by circumstances any longer. Amen. When we hear these words, don't just hear it. Let it get deep down in our spirits. Yes. 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 And tonight we're going to come against Hallelujah. failures and misfortune. Hallelujah. Our lives got to be different. We are tired of seeing our loved ones. Things happening. We can't help them. But God can help them if yes. they will turn to God. Hallelujah. So there are these things we're going to pray about. Yes. God help us. Hallelujah. Brethren, just believe. Hallelujah. Just let, oh. let's, just let us believe like Hallelujah. children. Hallelujah. Just believe that it's going to happen. Just Hallelujah. see it happening. Hallelujah. This place has to be filled. The glory of God has Hallelujah. got to fall down on us. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. When we're just worshiping God, 
healings and deliverance. The devil must be afraid to come into this place, brethren. He must be afraid to attack our families. And that is why we're praying for our families. Because many times we're standing and we're praying and we're fasting. But the forces is against us because they are not what we expect them to be. And sometimes many of them might be against us. So we know that we are not fighting a normal battle. But God is God. We are declaring there shall be no limitations. No limitations, brethren. If you haven't consecrated yourself, consecrate yourself. Ask God. We are going to do it tonight. We are going to do it first tonight. So we are going to come before God. Father God, we come to you tonight. There are so many things in our lives, oh God. Sometimes words that we have spoken, idle words without thinking. Sometimes we might have said things to each other, dear God, without even thinking, even though we are bred Christians, dear God. We, vexations and different things, little things, oh God, affect us so easily that it has no right to. But God, tonight, we ask, oh God, that you would cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh God, from the things, oh God, that cause us, oh God, not to receive from your hand. Because you said in your word when we read it, what kind of a fasting is this? Fasting and there is strife. Fasting and our hearts are not pure. Fasting and we are not in togetherness. Fasting and we are holding grudge and things against each other. Fasting and there's so many different things, oh God, that pollute in, oh God, our lives. God, we ask for your mercy and your forgiveness tonight. That as we come before you, dear God, we come in no other name. We come believing, dear God. And we ask of you, dear God. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness tonight, O oh God. And as we come, dear God, we ask of you to hear and answer our prayers. In Jesus' name. Father, we need, to, we need your blessings, dear God. We need your blessings, dear God. We take authority over failure, oh God. We take authority over frustration. Many, oh God, of us are frustrated because things are not going right. Things are not going the way, oh God. The enemy is bringing the spirit of frustration, oh God. We bind and we cancel, oh God. We take authority over the spirit of frustration. And we declare it will not work in our life. It will not work in the children of lighthouse Amen. lives, oh God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So many things you throw at us. Jesus. If it's not children, family problems, vehicles at work, oh God. But we ask of you, dear Father, to take full control. Yes. And we say to Satan, our God rebukes you. In the name of Jesus. You will not, you will not, Jesus. you will not torment God's people any longer. For we're standing on the word of God. Yes, hallelujah. And we're standing firm. Yes, Lord, yes. And we declare to you that you have no authority. In the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus. Oh God. Yes, yes. And we declare the fire of God. Yes, God. Oh, Jesus. we will not. We will not. We will not be threatened by In your threats. We will not go down. We will not know lack. We will not be defeated. We declare it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes. In Jesus' name. Setbacks. Setbacks. No more setbacks for God's children. No more setbacks. Children of God working hard, toiling, Jesus, planning. Jesus. We come against the spirit of setbacks in the name, in the of, name Jesus. of Jesus. We know that things should happen the way it should happen. We see it and we know. Jesus. But yet the setbacks. Jesus. We bind that spirit in the name, in of, the Jesus. name of Jesus. 
We take authority over it and we declare it shall not work in our life. It must not manifest itself. We put death to the spirit in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We got to see the blessings of God. We got to see God's children prospering. Because he said that he wished above all things over God. Father, you said it. Yes, Lord. Yes. That you wish above all things that yes. we prosper Hallelujah. and be in good health. Yes, Lord. So misfortune is not for us. No. Satan, we command you to take your spirit of misfortune and go in the name, in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God's children must be free. We're free to speak. Yes. We're free to move. We're yes. free to dance. We are yes. free to declare Lord and we are free Lord. to receive in the yes. name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Blessings are ours and Amen. we will have our blessing. Yes. We declare Amen. it tonight. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. We're tired of the spirit of almost dear. In the name of Jesus. It must not be. Hallelujah. We're seeing it and then when we reach out to touch it, it moves. It's gone. No more of that. No more of that. We cancel that spirit. We cancel misfortune out of our lives. In the name of Jesus. We cancel it. We are fruitful people. We will produce. Good things will come out of us. Good thinking. Good desires. We shall see things happening. Yes, amen. We will multiply. We will prosper in amen. everything that we do. Amen. Yes, we will Lord. have good desires. Jesus. We will have wisdom, the knowledge, yes. the understanding, how to do things. Amen. Yes, God, we thank you for the spirit, oh God, of wisdom and yes. understanding amen. and prosperity in the name of yes, Jesus. God. We receive it in the name of Jesus. We have power to speak. Yes. And we will speak it into the being and we declare it tonight yes, that it is ours, like house yes. people. We will prosper. Yes. We are prospering. Yes. Tonight we are prospering. Yes. We pull down the stronghold. We bind yes. the strong man in this area, yes. in yes. around here. Yes. And we declare that he will not enter into this yes. church. Yes. He will not yes. enter. He will not yes. affect yes. us. Yes. We cast yes. them out and we declare yes. and we release the blood around. And so he will not enter. He will watch us. He will see us. And he will not be able to tam to tamper us. And to mess with us. Because he will see and know that we are a different people. We are a peculiar people. God, and that is why I pray that our people, dear God, will stand for That we will rise up in this place. That we will worship our God. That we will find ourselves close to our God. That we will mean it and we will live it, dear God. Oh God, that you will be able, dear God. And when the enemy looks at us, he will know that we are a different people. And that he cannot mess with us. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we bless you. Hallelujah. Yes, God. dear God. Rain yes. is our words. Rain down on us, yes, God. Lord. Yes. Rain down on us, yes. dear God. Yes. Yes, Rain Lord. down on us, dear yes. Father. Amen. Yes, Bring Lord. springs for us in the valleys Amen. or the desert place. Yes, God. Cause springs to raise yes. up their God. Amen. Yes, Lord. It is Thank ours. You. It is ours. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, because yes. we are the people, we are the God. children of God. Amen. No more crying, no Amen. more sorrow, no Amen. more begging, Amen. no more poverty, Amen. no more lack. Amen. We claim what is ours and we take back yes. what the devil has stolen from name us. Of Jesus. We trample upon the serpents and yes. the scorpions yes. in yes. the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Every yes. demonic spirit. That is trying to wrestle with God's children and to deprive us and to take what belongs to us and to lock us up and to stop us from worshiping and stop us from getting on and going forward. We take authority over it in the name of Jesus. And we declare to you, you will not mess with our children. You will not mess with our grandchildren. You will not mess with the husbands. 
you will not mess with the wise in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We take the spiritual sword and we cut off your hands. Oh, we blind your eyes and we deafen your ears. You will not see us. You will not mess around with us. We are a different people, devil. We are the children of the Most High God. Yes, Lord. Our God has given us a name. He knows us by name. Yes. He holds us in the palms of his hand. Yes. Amen. He calls us Amen. by his name. Amen. Yes. Amen. We are a peculiar people. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, Thank we bless you, you tonight. Hallelujah. We bless Hallelujah. you tonight. Hallelujah. We bless you tonight. Hallelujah. Thank we you. cover homes. Yes. Every home represented in this place, oh yes. God. Yes, Lord. Every home, Father, when you get into these homes, yes. then you know, dear God, yes. the things, oh God, the very little things, the things that cause problems, yes. the things that the enemy can stir up, oh God. Yes. All the misfortune, dear God, yes. the unhappiness, yes. oh God, yes. the confusion, dear God. Oh God, and the things that the enemy can do, dear Father. Jesus. Oh God, to bring division. We take authority in the name of Jesus. And we declare that our homes, you will not tamper with it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. We put the blood on every door closed around our homes at the very grounds. We soak it with the blood of Jesus. And God, we ask that your angels will always encamp around us. Night and day, day Amen. and night, Amen. oh God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Bless our families. Yes, Lord. It is time for our families to rise up. Yes, Lord. Oh God, it is not for the enemy, the outsiders, to watch and to speak and to hiss and to laugh and to throw remarks at God's Jesus. children. Jesus. So, Father God, we just thank you. We claim them. Thank we claim them for the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord. We claim them. Thank you, Lord. We claim them. Thank you, and Father, we refuse. We refuse to accept generational curses. Amen. Amen. We cancel it from our lives. Amen. We cancel it from our hope. Amen. We cancel it from our generation. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Marriage breakers, we cancel it. We declare it shall not work anymore. Delayed marriages, we come against it in the name of Jesus. The spirit that is holding back for God's children, we take a authority over it and we command you to leave the premises, leave our homes, leave in the name of Jesus. Marriage breakers. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. If the unbelievers could keep marriage, the believers Amen. should be able to. Amen. Amen. And we are the ones to set the example. Amen. God, we thank you for delivering Jesus. us. Yes. We thank you for delivering us. We thank you for deliverance in the name of Jesus. We need a refreshing. We need a refreshing in every area of our lives. In the name of Jesus, purify our hearts, oh God. Give us revelation. Show us, dear God. Father God, as we lie down, oh God, show us. Grant us your dreams, your visions, your direction, God. Without your direction, oh God. We need direction, dear God. Children of God need direction, dear God, that we will be able, dear Father, Oh God, to move and to save ourselves and our loved ones, our children. And even those that you put in our lives, oh God. That we'll be able to speak into the lives, oh God. We need to speak into each other's lives, oh God. So give us desires, oh God, to read your word. To come before you, dear God. To yield ourselves and to give ourselves wholly unto you, dear God. 
fully unto you, yeah. dear Father, that you will be able, dear God, to do mighty yeah. and great acts, oh yeah. God, through yeah. us yeah. in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. We declare yeah. limitations are broken off Amen. of our lives. Amen. Broken off our lives. Amen. Broken off of our lives. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, I bless you tonight. Hallelujah. I give you honor and I give you glory. Yes. And I seal every prayer that has been sent up tonight with the blood of Jesus. And we thank you for the answer, Lord. We thank you for the deliverance. We thank you, dear God. We bless you, dear somebody. Thank the Lord. We thank you, dear God. We thank you because you've heard our prayers. We thank you, dear God, because limitations are broken. We thank you, dear God, that we are working in the right spirit. Amen. Amen. We thank you, dear God, for the refreshing, Hallelujah. dear God. Yes, Lord. We thank you, dear God, for the desire, dear God, to come before you to pray, oh yes. God, to yes. fast, oh God. Yes, Lord. We thank you, dear God, because we are expecting and Amen. we believe that you have heard and you, yes. you will bless us, oh Amen. God. Yes, Lord. We yes. thank you for renewing our hearts, yes. oh God. Yes. Yes. Give us the right spirit. Yes, Renew the right spirit within yes. us. Grant it, Lord. Amen. We thank you. Yes, Lord. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Father, we bless your name. Shall we stand tonight? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Tonight, we just want to give God thanks and praise for his word. We thank him for the prayers that have already gone up. And one of the things that stands out is fasting attracts God's attention. If an entire nation could be saved because one person decided, made a decision that they were going to fast and pray and seek God. We saw how God worked on the behalf of Jehoshaphat because he decided to fast and to pray and to seek God. And tonight my challenge to you is, who is your God? Is your flesh your God? Is your hunger your pang? What, who is your God? Or is Jehovah your God? Are you willing to make the sacrifice of denying yourself, denying your flesh of its appetites, what it wants, so that you can have what God desires for you? God is always giving. We can never outgive Him. But sometimes we allow the things around us and our flesh, our appetites, to distract us and so we become so consumed that sometimes we miss hearing what God has for us but tonight after we have heard the word and we hear what God has for us and wants to do for us he wants to break that cycle of failure and defeat he wants to rain his blessing down on you so tonight my question is to you what decision are you going to make what decision are you going to make are you going to deny your flesh for the 21 days like Daniel like Esther what are you going to do that you can see the victory that you could see the salvation of the Lord what what is priority in your life what is what is most beneficial at the end of the day you think about it as for me and my house we will serve the Lord we will seek after God earnestly because we know what we desire of him and the thing is we want what God desires because he is pure, and he wants the best for all of us. So tonight, let's take the word that we have heard, and let's continue to deny ourselves. Let's take up our cross, and let's follow Jesus in this path. And we know that at the end of it, just like Esther saw the miracle, Jehoshaphat saw the miracle, and everyone who fasted, who denied themselves of what was taking their attention away from God, when they decided to press on, to persevere, to reach forward, they got the breakthrough in their lives. So tonight, the prayers have already gone up. The word of God has already gone forth, and God's word will never return void. So don't let it return void to you, because it will never return void to God. And so tonight, we will wrap up in prayer, and think about it. Think about it as you press forward. Don't give up. My encouragement to you, don't give up. Whatever it is that is trying to distract you to be a God in your life, deny that so that we may seek after the true and living God tonight. That's our desire. Amen. That's our desire. Hallelujah. Father, tonight we bless your name.
Father, we thank you for your word that has gone forth. Lord, you have expressed your desire to us. God, you want to break the cycle. God, you want to rain blessing upon us. You want to give us direction. Lord, you want to give us guidance. You want to give us your very best in every area of our lives, spiritually, physically, emotionally, financially, Lord God. Lord, you want to give us your very best. And God, your arm is not too short. Father, we know that your ear is not deaf. Lord God, and we thank you that we know that fasting attracts your attention. Father, for you said that some things do not go but by prayer and fasting. And so, Father, we have dedicated our lives to you. Father, we ask you for your forgiveness where we fell short, where we were distracted, O oh God. Lord, where we gave in to the temptation, O oh God, instead of standing strong. Lord, we repent tonight. And Father, we refocus our eyes upon you. Lord, we set our gaze upon you we set our heart to seek you like the psalmist david father we set our hearts and our minds to seek you and god we pray that you would strengthen us oh god lord we pray that you would continue to keep us covered with your blood father spread your protection over us spread your protection over our families oh god that as we press through one day at a time god that we would not give up we would not give up, God, until, Lord, we see the manifestation of your miracle in our lives, in our homes, in our situation. Yes, Father, God. you know what we, your people, are believing you yes. for. Father, and we thank you, God, that nothing is impossible nothing with is you. Impossible. And Father, we decree and declare that this fasting, God, we will see the breaking. We will see the shifting. We will see the things moving that has been so difficult and challenging. God, we thank you that we will see the result, God, because our trust is in you. And Father, may we speak your word. May we declare your word instead of what we are feeling. May we declare your word instead of what we are thinking. Father, may we declare your word despite what it looks like, God. May we declare your word in every situation. Father, we thank you tonight that your word works and your word will not return to you void. So, Father, our prayer is that you would keep us. Father, we pray that in you we would rely and be strengthened and be encouraged, O oh God, to go forward, to go forth in faith, O oh God, and see the victory. See the miraculous, oh God. Lord, see the outpouring of your spirit in this place like never before. Father, our desires for the demonstration of your power in our lives, oh God. Your demonstration in this place, oh God. That, Lord, you and you alone get the glory, Father. And, Lord, at the end of it all, we will say it had to be God. It had to be God. No one else but the Lord. And he has made everything beautiful in his time. Father, tonight we thank you for your word that goes forth to heal your children, oh God. Lord, we thank you that sickness has no place in the lives of your children. And we thank you that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, we were healed. We thank you, oh God, that by the stripes of Jesus, Sister Quamina, Sister Wolford, and everyone experiencing a challenge, Lord, is healed, God. For, Lord, your word will not return void to you. And, Father, you said you send your word and you heal them and you deliver them from their destruction. And, Father, we thank you that it is so. We thank you for encouraging their hearts. We thank you for strengthening their faith. We thank you, O oh God, that they would speak your word, O oh God. And Lord, tonight, whatever again your people are believing you for, we pray, God, that you would help us not to give up. Lord, give us the encouragement. Help us to hide ourselves in your word. Help us to dig deep in your word and declare your word in our situation. Help us to declare your word, thus said the Lord. Not what I feel, not what I see, not what I think. But thus said the Lord in this situation. And it will change and God gets the glory. Father, we seal our lives tonight with the blood. And even as we leave, we thank you that we are covered. Because you spread your protection over us. Lord, you have already dispatched angels who are working on our behalf, God. We thank you that the angels are preserving us. That no evil shall befall us. No evil shall befall our families. No evil shall befall Lighthouse Ministry. And no plague shall come near our dwelling. Father, we speak not our words, but we declare your word, God. 
We declare your word, Father, for you watch over your word to perform it. God, we thank you that miracles are happening. Even now, oh God, in the lives of your people, you have broken chains. Lord, you have broken fetters. God, you are setting the captive free. And tonight we declare that the word of God will come to pass. We declare that the word of God prevails. We declare that the word of God is true. God is true and every man a liar. And God, we stand on your word tonight. We stand on your word, God, that we shall have testimonies. We stand on your word that miracles are happening, oh God. We expect our miracles. We expect to see your goodness, Lord, in the land of the living in every area of our lives. We expect that something good is going to happen to us, God. And we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We thank you for the testimonies, God. We thank you for the testimonies. We thank you for the turnaround. We thank you for the changes. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, that you are in the midst of us. And you are mighty. You will save. You rejoice over us, God. For we are your people, O oh God. Lord, we thank you that you will crown this year with your bounty. And you will cause your cards to overflow towards us with blessings, God. We are blessed to be a blessing. And we are going forth blessed. We are going forth blessed. And we will be a blessing. We will be living testimonies to show that our God word is true. Our God does not lie. We serve the true and living God. Lord, tonight we give you the praise. We give you the honor and the glory. Lord, we know you will not fail. For we heard your word last night. Fear not. Fear not, fear not, for the Lord will do great things. And tonight we expect the great things. Every day we expect the great things. For God, you said, fear not, you are doing great things. Thank you for the great and mighty things. Thank you for the testimonies, God. Thank you for what you're doing. And we will not be the same. Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor and the praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And as we go, I pray that the Lord go before you, take you safely home, and bring you back tomorrow night as we continue our fasting and prayer. For those of you who need to go to the bowl pantry, there are lots of things there. When you break the fast in the evening, ginger, they have turmeric, they have cucumber so please visit the um pantry and for those of you watching us on the stream you stream as well as facebook the fasting fasting continues and for those of you who need to start begin today don't wait tomorrow just begin and watch god work for you we give god praise and thanks in the name of jesus amen